David Summers with City Planning. And um, we're here to talk about North Figueroa Street, a uh, proposal for bike lanes. Um, we were requested um, by the Royal Second Every Council to come and make this presentation, have a focus meeting. Um, and so we'll have uh, 11 and 11 and 8 um, go through the presentation, and then afterwards we'll, uh, I guess we'll open it up to comments. Go ahead. Nate, go ahead. We have extra chairs over here. Six extra chairs. Actually, I need a chair. So, good evening. Uh, my name is Nate Barrett. I'm a bicycle coordinator um, for the city of LA. I work for the Department of Transportation. Um, I'm going to kind of go through a presentation about the project. Um, those of you who have been to our previous meetings, um, especially the hearing that we held at the River Center um, some weeks ago, will be a little bit familiar with it. But I'll zero in on North Fig um, tonight, especially um, from San Fernando Road to North Boulevard. Um, it's kind of the, the project that we've been asked to talk about tonight. Um, David and Tim are here um, to kind of help us answer specific um, follow-up questions from the Rural Neighborhood Council. Um, as questions come up from the public during comments, we're happy to answer the questions, but we're going to let the, the Rural Neighborhood Neighborhood Council um, board kind of decide which questions you want us to answer, because uh, that can take some time to answer. Um, so we're having to questions about the presentation. I'll try to get through the presentation um, pretty quickly. Um, the, just so that we have more time for comments and follow-up questions. Uh, but essentially what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to try to put these bike lanes in context. Um, why, why are we proposing these bike lanes now? Um, we'll go into some of the details, um, some of the project details. So what, what would it entail to put a bike lane on North Fig? What type of bike lane would it be? Um, we'll talk a little bit about the benefits as well. And then also talk a little bit about the cost. Um, so kind of what we're, what we're kind of weighing versus what we're getting. Um, there's some very specific reasons we're going through this process for this project in particular. Um, some other projects we haven't done this because uh, of some other reasons, but we'll, we'll go through that. All right, so why these bike lanes? Um, so North Figure Road is first identified as a major corridor um, for us to look at in the 2010 bike plan. So the 2010 bike plan was adopted uh, March 3rd, 2011. Um, it, our most recent bike plan is a lot more um, ambitious than our previous bike plans. Uh, previous, the first one, 1977, um, kind of first came up with the idea of a backbone network of arterial bike lanes, um, but we didn't really implement too many of those bike lane projects. You know, we, we kind of set out a strategy. We want to have bike lanes across the city for regional travel, um, but we didn't go very far with that. We did get some very good recreational bike paths out of that. Um, that's where we first kind of had a vision for the LA River Path. So that's kind of what some of those early plans have done. Um, the 1996 plan, um, again, was another plan that we just didn't really implement too much of. Um, so it became very important to um, our bicycle activists, um, as well as our city council, that the most recent bike plan be something that we could implement. So um, it has a couple strategies. So it's, like I said, it's more ambitious. So we more than doubled the m number of bikeway miles that we wanted. So um, previous plans only had about 800. This one sets forth that we want to do about 1,600 across the city. Um, it sets up three different networks of types of bikeways that we want. So we want separated bike paths along our rivers. That's really important. Uh, we want lanes on kind of a five mile grid across the city um, that connect major commercial districts um, that help you do that regional commutes across the city that also connect you to major destinations on major streets. Um, and then we also have a neighborhood network where we do want to do kind of traffic calming improvements on quieter neighborhood streets on a one mile grid to help you get from your local resident um, residents to those major destinations on the major streets. So those are kind of the three grids that we talk about. Um, previous plans, I talked about that. This kind of gives you a little visualization of where the 2010 bike plan is compared to the previous ones. Um, another important way I talked about this, it was really important to our city council um, that this most recent plan could be something that could be implemented. Um, so to that, there's two main ways 
that was set up to be made possible. Um, we have an implementation team. So there's a quarterly group of people. Um, everybody's invited to come to these. We've had more and more neighborhood council um, representatives coming to those meetings. But we talk about how we're doing implementing the plan. We prioritize which streets to look at first. Um, and we also have an implementation strategy. Um, that strategy kind of takes the whole 1600 mile vision that we have and prioritizes um, facilities that will connect gaps in our existing network. So for all these many years, we've been doing bike lanes where they kind of fit, um, but we haven't put good networks in place. So the bike lane just kind of sits on its own in one spot, and in another part of the city, there's another bike lane that just kind of sits on its own. So we prioritize 200 miles that connect those things to each other. Um, and that's kind of, that's one of the reasons that North Fig especially was kind of selected as something that connects, connects existing facilities to each other. There's a lot of benefit to connecting our bikeway facilities. Um, the other thing that it does, the strategy so far seems to be working. Um, you know, we've done a lot of bike lane miles. This is our bike lane mileage growth before the 2010 bike plan, just kind of incremental, two or three miles a year where we can find the space. Um, since the adoption, we've done a lot more bike lane miles. Um, this bar actually could be updated and go much higher. We've done 75 miles of new bike lanes um, this year. Um, we've been doing those bike lanes where there's room for them on the streets. Um, when we do, as we do traffic analysis, um, there are guidelines in the city about, um, you know, the impact of removing one travel lane, what that impact might be. So there are some pre-established guidelines for that. And so if we run the analysis and the, the traffic impact isn't too severe, um, then we will kind of reallocate space on streets. Um, York Boulevard, which we have heard um, some folks have been a little bit upset about York Boulevard, but that is one that where the, um, when we did the analysis, the impacts um, didn't break that threshold for us. Um, and so that was one where we felt like you get a little bit, it's a little bit, the traffic conditions, um, a little bit worse, especially at the peak hours of the day, um, but the safety benefits are really worth it. So we kind of moved ahead with that at the direction of the mayor and our city council offices. We've been really kind of talking about the safety benefits that these products provide. Yes, they cause a little bit of congestion sometimes, a little bit, your travel times get extended a little bit, and we think the benefits are worth it. Um, some of these projects that we're proposing um, that connect these gaps, so essentially, um, let me back up a little bit. So we talked about prioritizing gaps in our network, right? Um, so these, the, the thinner red lines are our existing facilities right now. Um, is despite even all the extra miles that we've been doing, there are still some really key gaps. And so those are the projects that we've been talking about across the city. Um, these pink areas. So Colorado and North Fig would establish kind of a, a network of bike lanes in Northeast LA. Um, we were looking at four facilities on the west side to give a single bike lane across the west side. Um, the central area, we were talking about a number of lanes to kind of connect all the central um, bike lanes to, to each other, and then also some facilities in the valley. All right, and that's where these, these that's where these projects came from. All right, so um, we'll dive a little bit more down into, into kind of Northeast LA and North Fig. Colorado, we've talked about, there's North Fig. We're looking at North Fig kind of in a couple sections. So we're kind of thinking about them a little bit separately. Um, and that's because the CD14 and CD4, CD1 have kind of asked us to do that. But we do see, this is kind of the picture that we're proposing, uh, being able to connect the whole Northeast LA with, with bike lanes. Um, and then the, the facility we're gonna talk about today, specifically is North Fig from York um, down to um, San Fernando. Um, and so this North Fig row connects a lot of things that we already have going for us. So we have the LA River Path down to the south. That Riverside Bridge is being widened so that the bike, so that you can get more car flow on it, but also so that the river path can be extended across the bridge. So the river path is going to come all the way across the Riverside Drive Bridge and connect up to North Figueroa and San Fernando Road. So we are roundabout there. Um, they've, they've already started construction on that. Um, then the river path will wrap around and connect up to Avenue 19, which will help people get into the downtown. So once the Spring Street Bridge is widened and has bike lanes on it, that'll be kind of a good bikeway into downtown. Um, and then if you travel up North Fig, you have great connections to the Cypress Avenue bike lanes um, via Cypress Avenue and Avenue 28, where it's a two-way couplet. 
Um, you have good connections to some of our roots that are already existing off of Griffin. Um, you're not far from the Royal Secular Neighborhood um, bike path that's just outside here. Um, you also connect up to the York Boulevard lanes um, and then the proposed Colorado lanes as well. So you're just connecting, stitching together a lot of different facilities. There's just a lot of value for that. You make a lot more trips um, possible by bike by connecting those up. Um, here's kind of the configuration that we're proposing. This kind of generally gives you the, the proposal for the whole stretch of, most of the stretch of North Big, um, from York down to Colorado, um, where we have two lanes. San Fernando. San Fernando, down to San Fernando. So right now where we have two lanes in each direction and then parking on both sides, um, we're proposing to remove the one southbound lane. Um, so the peak hour flow in the PM is generally northward. So the PM peak won't be affected too much. Most of your traffic floor in the afternoon is going north. Um, and so you'll still have two, um, two vehicle lanes for that. The, um, where you're going to get a little bit of extra travel time is in the mornings when people are heading to work. Um, we think folks can shift over to North Bay. Um, but for the purposes of our traffic analysis, we assume that everybody um, is just going to stay there. So we basically do traffic counts at a number of intersections up and down. North Figueroa, um, we kind of give it a, a grade on how traffic performs at that rush hour. And then we take one of those travel lanes out in the software package that we have, and then we run the same count number that we have through it to see what the additional delay would be. So you're talking about um, minutes of delay. We'll go, I'll go into another graph in just a second. Um, it gives us a little bit more context and kind of explains it a little bit. Um, but essentially, you're going to get travel time delay um, in the morning on the way to work if everybody kept using this corridor the same. Um, a lot of times, other projects um, throughout the nation, folks have seen that delay not really materialize because folks do learn to use different corridors, to use the freeway. Um, this might encourage some folks to start using the gold line. And then we do know that people do use bike lanes once we put them in. So um, we think there will be some modal shift, um, but for the purposes of our traffic analysis and our study guidelines, we've been very conservative with the expectation for that the same traffic flow as is right now. Um, this kind of gives you a graph of how um, we do this traffic analysis over on the right. Um, we're in a, kind of a new phase right now. We have a new law called AB 2245 um, that says um, while bike lanes and bike paths and bike routes have always been exempt from CEQA, the traffic impacts themselves have not. So previously, previous to this new law, you would have had to do an EIR to look at these projects, and that's what we started doing. Um, we started doing all the analysis that we would have used for an EIR. Um, the new law basically exempts us from CEQA, but it says that we have to do all the same stuff that we would have been doing anyway. So you have to do a traffic study which we were already doing, and you also have to do a safety study. Um, and, the, and for this type of project, we're really talking about a safety benefit, because bike lanes have a really good established safety benefit for um, bicycle pedestrian collisions, bringing those collisions down. Um, and so the new law says that you need to go through um, a, a couple, you need to do these studies, and then you also have to have a hearing. So we had a series of hearings throughout the city, um, and then you kind of um, at the request of council, um, we've been doing additional outreach on top of those hearings that we did. Um, I think we've been probably 10 or 15 meetings since then um, across the city. We've been doing a lot of additional outreach in the Northeast LA area. Uh, we have had the most support in this area, um, but we also have had um, politicians who've been really concerned out here that we keep doing additional outreach, that we really make sure the neighborhoods know what's going on and what, what really we're considering as a city with these two projects. Um, this is a visualization of um, traffic over through the whole day. So if you imagine over there on the left is midnight, right? On that side of the graph and over here is midnight. So it's a 24 hours. Um, we call it the peak hour traffic because right around you know, 7.30 to 9.30, the traffic's really bad in the morning. And then the evening, 4 to 6, traffic's even worse usually across the city. So that peak in the evening is usually wider. So that means that there's more traffic in the evening over a wider amount of time. Um, and then there's also a little, a little bit more severe. So travel times in the afternoon times are often longer than your travel times in the morning along the same corridor. Um, and when we assign a, kind of a level of service grade in the city, A, B, C, D, F, it has to do with the height of that peak. 
um, the, the additional level of delay that you have during those peak hour traffic times. Um, other cities judge LOS based on the traffic through the whole day, they just kind of average it. Um, City of LA, for the longest time, we've been concerned about auto flow, um, how well we move automobile traffic, especially at the peak hour. So our existing travel guidelines, we are very conservative. We look just at the peak hour when traffic is worse. That's the most important part of um, our analysis. Um, and so when you're looking at these graphs here, um, these delays, you have to imagine them on those peaks. So th this right here is graphing the average amount of delay during your peak hour travel in the morning. So the existing traffic right now is the blue bar. Um, so you can kind of see the blue bar. And this is in seconds of delay um, per intersection. So Colorado was an intersection that we have traffic counts for. We also have traffic counts for New York, Pasadena, Avenue 26, and San Fernando. If I may interject, we've been we started our design for the project to lay it out to see exactly what the what the parking will look like, and our current design keeps two lanes each direction at Avenue 26. So that red bar at Avenue 26 will disappear. We are revising our analysis to reflect that, just to clarify. Okay. And that's again, and that's kind of why I have David and um, kind of Tim here to help me with the presentation. So my job as a bicycle coordinator is the big picture. Um, David's kind of a, an environmental review person, um, expert for planning department. He's also our bicycle planner. So when we have questions about you know the process, the legality stuff, the CEQA stuff, AB two two four five, you know all the all that kind of stuff, David's kind of our expert on that. I think of our bikeways engineers. Tim is our lead on this project as kind of our street width experts and also kind of a design expert. So he really has a good understanding of exactly you know how this project's being kind of designed. Um, that's why they're here. Um, and then like you were saying, Avenue 26, that was the worst intersection. Um, we've tweaked the design to be able to keep the two, keep two lanes there, so that will help folks get over the freeway in the morning. Um, that, will, that, that red peak will be a little bit lower, which is good to hear. Um, and so that, the red bars on top are the additional seconds of delay expected for each of these major intersections. Um, they give you kind of a snapshot of what the additional delay would be if you were traveling the whole corridor. Um, and we assigned that a number in our, um, our traffic study that we've released. Um, so when you're looking at, if you're looking at that traffic study yourself and you're reading these numbers, this is kind of a visualization of that, of those numbers in, in that study. Um, here's the PMP. Um, you can see here that the, the additional delay is really not much, and that's because we're keeping the two northbound travel lanes for the PM. And the reason we chose the PM peak to keep the two northbounds, because Ostensibly, you could have done it vice versa, right? And I'm always having to ask Tim to remind me which one it is, but it's the PM peak, the north floors are, are usually worse in the city. Um, that's the case with this project as well. The North Figueroa just sees more automobile traffic in the evenings. People are trip chaining in the afternoons. Um, so, so that's why we decided to keep, keep the two northbound lanes. <laughs> Um, before I go on the benefits, I want to go right back to the. I want to go right back to this picture of it. Um, the bike lanes that we're proposing will be buffered bike lanes, so they're going to have um, your standard kind of five foot width. But next to the five foot width, there's going to be this buffered area, um, and that's cars and buses are not supposed to drive in this area. Um, unless there's an emergency, then bikes should pull over. You know, automobile traffic should pull over to the right. Um, but these, these spaces are kind of reserved for the bike's um, comfortability. So this is a facility that will feel like the facilities downtown feel like, like Spring Street feels like, like Main Street, if you've ridden your bike on Main Street downtown. They're very wide, they feel very comfortable as a bicyclist. We've seen more women bicyclists on Spring Street, um, and women are a good kind of indicator species of how, how well the comfort of the bike lane feels. They're not a different species, I understand. Um, they, bicycle planner, bicycle coordinator across the U.S. City, would like to see more women bicycling to the, to the shows at this facility. Um, and so the bike lanes on North Figueroa will be that. Um, they'll be these really comfortable lanes. Um, these are also lanes that in the future we can convert to separated cycle tracks um, once we find funding and once we find, figure out the design issues. So, we have a project called My Figueroa in downtown on South Figueroa that will be the first cycle track in the city. 
Um, we're figuring out how ourselves how to design that under California rules. Um, once we figure that out, and then once I've kind of made the pitch for additional funding, um, buffered lanes are um, a great place to put the parking um, outside of the bike lane and have the bike lane next to the curb eventually. Um, you have to find funding because the signalization at the intersections is a little bit more complicated. So you need separate bike signals for that phasing, but this is the type of facility that we could upgrade to that at a later point. All right. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the travel delays that we're expecting. Um, those delays are like, most likely to be in the AM peak for this project. Um, talking um, additional seconds of delay at each of these intersections. Um, it ends up being a, some minutes when you add them all together. Um, and now we're going to talk a little bit, I'll go really quickly through some of the benefits. But before I do that, um, a number, there's a study done recently that kind of summarized a number of studies that have been done across um, England, Britain, and also the U.S. that a lot of these types of projects, the ones that I've circled here, that are predicting travel delays, oftentimes they don't actually lead to travel delays because the congestion actually helps change people's behavior. It helps people, encourage people to take transit. It helps encourage people to get on the freeway sooner than they would have. Um, my girlfriend and I used to commute from Pasadena downtown, and we always used to skip over to Figueroa very easily. This type of project will deter us, would deter someone from doing that kind of thing. Um, and then a lot of people will start bicycling. Um, we've seen the rate of bicycling go up exponentially the last few years. Um, but we can't promise that that will happen in this project. So we're just saying, conservatively, we're expecting some additional delays. Um, there's a number of benefits that we think this type of project provides. Um, travel mode benefits, so people do shift modes. Um, the cities in the U.S. that have the highest bicycling modes are the ones that have the most complete networks. Northeast LA will have a very complete network once these projects are in place. Um, this is kind of another visualization of that. We also just know that bicycling is really on the rise in LA. It was on the rise even before we started doing anything for, for bicyclists. Um, and you can really see that in some of the numbers. The commute mode has been up, has kind of doubled from 2001 to 2009. That was really before we started doing all the lanes. Um, you can see that increase when you're out there. Um, commute mode is not really a good picture of the number of people bicycling because a lot of people that won't commute to work will commute local trip, will use their bike for local trips. Um, SCAG um, estimates the number of bike and walking trips to be 21% of all trips. So there's a number of local trips that we make that more and more people are using their bike, more and more people are using transit and walking for those trips. Um, it meets a rising demand that was already there. Um, more and more youth are abandoning cars and doing that. Um, there's also, of all the trips that we do, most trips are less than three miles, a good portion of trips are less than three miles. Um, less than three miles is a great um, trip length to do on your bike. And we make it possible for more people to make these types of trips, with these types of facilities. Um, and we've just, we've just seen that, you know, where bicycling was already rising before we were not doing anything, where we have put in lanes, we've also seen increases. Um, the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition has done a number of counts now, they've done two counts. Uh, all across the nation where you do facilities, you do see increases. Um, we also know that these kind of buffered facilities, so this is Spring Street, it's green as well. Um, Figueroa won't necessarily be green, but it will look like this in some places where we don't have parking. Um, imagine parking to the right of this um, for now to kind of get a visualization of North Fig. You do have people who wouldn't have rode their bikes down North Spring riding down it now that wouldn't have done it before. Um, improved safety, so there are a number of studies um, to show that bicyclists and pedestrians are um, more likely to be killed when the collisions happen. So bicyclists and pedestrians um, are just in a higher rate of collisions than our motorists generally. Um, and by doing, um, by doing bike lanes, you kind of help, um, you help slow a quarter down a little bit, so even in the off-peak periods on that one lane where the one lane is actually um, enough to handle the traffic, you do kind of calm speeds a little bit because you don't have people kind of whip around each other as much. So a lot of streets in LA where they're really wide and the off peak when there's not traffic, folks are kind of really passing really kind of too much. 
Um, so when you can, whenever you can bring speeds down to a more normalized level, um, you decrease the severity of injuries. So um, bike lane projects have um, not only do they decrease the number of collisions, but because speeds are lower on a corridor, they also um, decrease the severity of injuries. And you, um, so this kind of graph just shows that at 50 miles per hour, when you get hit by a, as a bicyclist or a pedestrian, you're more like you're much more likely to die than if you get hit at 20 miles per hour. So it's actually the, by by lowering speeds in half, you actually decrease the rate of injury and death by more than half. When you say bicycle pedestrian crashes, are you saying bicycles hitting pedestrians? No, I'm talking about um, all bikes and pedestrians getting hit by motorists generally. Um, I don't have, I haven't seen a whole lot of, there are some bike ped collisions. Um, the, the law in the city is that you're allowed to ride your bike on, on, on sidewalks, but you have to be wary. So if a bicyclist kind of hits a pedestrian or injures a pedestrian, it is the bicyclist's fault in, I would say, most cases. Um, and so if, if you're a pedestrian and you've been hit by a bicyclist, by all means, get a witness, um, charge them. I encourage you to do that. Bicyclists need to be very careful of pedestrians when they're on sidewalks. One other question. How about a bicycle hitting a vehicle? What's the graphics on that? Graphics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll skip that. Um, there are a number of the public health um, folks that are really encouraging bicycling. Um, we really have a crisis in, in our city in terms of obesity. Uh, we need folks to exercise more. Um, bicycling is a good way to get a little bit more exercise. Um, especially when so many of the trips that we make are three miles or less. Um, if you can do one or two of those trips a week on a facility that makes you feel comfortable, that does help um, us be healthier. Um, there have been some study, there's a growing body of research that shows that bike lanes have an economic benefit. Um, here locally, the student from UCLA did a study on York, um, and before we put the lanes in on York, um, is kind of when he was doing this study, um, and York was interesting because half of the corridor, the, the western half of the corridor saw, had a road diet, uh, I think it was back in around 2006. Um, the bike lanes came in a couple years after that. The road diet was originally done just for that safety benefit. Um, road diets, when you go from a four to a three, as York did, has a huge safety benefit because you provide a center left turn lane that wasn't there before, that cuts uh, down. I was parking for business, I'm sorry, it was. I was parking for business. Um, there may have been multiple benefits for doing it, but the safety reasons for having that center left turn lane are really huge. You cut down the number of um, head-on collisions, which is a huge safety benefit. Um, the bike lanes were added later. Um, that center lane that provides, let me, um, there'll be plenty of time for comment shortly on one with that presentation, and I am, and I'm happy to I'm happy to answer questions. Um, the student who did this at UCLA um, saw that the, the businesses you had a compare you were able to compare the one side to the other side that didn't have the road diet or bike lanes. Um, he didn't see a harm to it. He did also surveys um, a number of he did a survey of customers and business owners. Um, business owners often don't see. Um, how their customers got there, so they often assume that customers got there by, um, by car. Um, on New York, more people got to businesses by walking and biking than businesses actually realized. Um, and there are more and more studies across the nation that, showing, that are showing a good economic benefit. You can provide um, additional bike parking is very affordable as compared to adding a car space. Um, folks want to drive less. Um, so there, there's a number of um, studies now that, that can show an economic benefit. Um, that's about all I have. I am um, happy to take questions um, with, from the board. Um, I have Tim and um, David here to answer questions that I may not be able to answer. I just have a quick question about the Gold Line crossing but near Avenue 61. I'm sorry, before you, before you ask questions, could you recommend that the chair? We do have common parts, so let the chair recognize you before you ask questions, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mark Penny. Well, we would like to entertain question and answer just with you guys first, and then we can take public comment after that, if that's okay. If you have a very specific question that's related to your presentation, I have otherwise a I hold your question. comments for the public comment period, if you turn to the speaker card. Okay. I have a very specific question. 
question about their presentation. Please go ahead. What I would like to know is you address the fact that the road died. Now, according to the LA Department of Transportation, the road died on Figueroa is 30,000 vehicles a day. And according to the guidelines, you're not supposed to put in bicycle lanes on a road that has a road diet of anything longer than 19,000 cars. So, how do you address that simple fact that according to the own rules of the Los Angeles County Transportation, this is almost double, almost double, and you don't even mention that in your presentation. So the, the, the those um, numbers are our guideline. Um, in this, in most instances, when you do a road diet, guideline, sir. Can I finish? Yeah, I'm going to finish. You're circumnavigating a rule, a, a rule from the Let me finish. Let me finish, please. Let me finish. I apologize. I will shut up. Thirty thousand. Um, when you're trying to do a road diet, the standard road diet is when you have four lanes in each direction. And you take out one lane in each direction, and you put in a center left turn lane. That's your standard road diet. Those projects, you want kind of a twenty to twenty-five thousand range for your for your daily ADT. Um, and this. Do we need to go back to the presentation at all? Because I think we're having this problem. I don't think so. No. Um, it's all down. Okay. Um, but in this instance. Um, we're actually preserving the two lanes in the southbound direction for that, um, for that, in the northbound direction for the PMP. Um, the, those guidelines also kind of help us interpret the, our LOS guidelines for traffic. And so, if we don't, if if we're following the letter of the law, we do need to do what we've been doing. Um, that's why, that's why we're having these types of meetings. We we do think that there will be some additional delay in the in that on the travel plan for this corridor. That's why we're having the hearings. It's kind of a cost benefit. Yeah. Just, to so just to clarify, yeah. Yeah. The, the thre first of all, that's not a city adopted threshold. I'm not sure where you're reading from. Maybe you said Metropolitan Park. I actually do my research, sir. No, no, I'm just asking. I'm not sure where you're fully from. Remember, you want me to talk about the fire department and the lies you guys talked about the fire department? Are we going to go there? Are you going to call me a liar again? I'm, I you're calling me a liar, sir. No, I didn't do that. No, we didn't do that. What's your? I'm just curious. I'm just curious what your source is because as the city, we don't have a guideline that says. It's from a transportation team. engineer who would not like to be named at this time because. He's being punished by the council members who want to ram this through for the fifty thousand dollar painting contract per mile that this is really all about. That's my answer to your question, sir. We have we have some leeway. This this does this is a new touch project. That's why we go through these hearings. Um, but we do think it's an appropriate project to consider for. So the you follow the guidelines in these suits. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Popular guidelines. You've been involved in guidelines. Look at the numbers, Joey. Look at the numbers. I've been living on the York Boulevard for four years. I'm retired law enforcement. It's too bad because the last week I got hit by the car. For the council, there was a police officer there, and I said, Senior Lead Officer, I said, would you mind speaking up and tell us what happens on that middle lane on York Boulevard when we have a truck that's unloading the beer for the York Bar or for the upholstery shop that's blocking that, and an emergency if you have an ambulance, a black and white going code three, a fire truck going code three, they want to go over the hill on Avenue 51 to get over to Colorado to the Eagle Rock area. They are now going on Meridian, Stratford, and Rangeview. They're coming up Avenue 50 and cutting over because the traffic at those key hours from anywhere from 3.30 until about 7 o'clock at night is backed up from Armandale all the way over to Avenue 55. And the emergency vehicles cannot respond and find the bad way of responding. I want him to turn. explain that. He said that the middle lane was a, was a positive element of his design. It's backwards. So listen to this. What about through our process? Would you just shout out comments now? Is that she yeah. called us. Uh, no, she chose uh, 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 She called us. Uh, uh, I think the goal is to answer questions on the board after that. Of this month, the hook and ladder came down and tried to make a right hand turn on Avenue 57. The pumper and the hook and ladder had to swing all the way over on the left hand lane, the parking lane, to get around the bus, the car making the street ahead, 
and the car making a left-hand turn, and the car in the opposite lane, and they couldn't get through. So maybe you should be more concerned about public safety than you are about putting bike lanes in. There are plenty of streets. Uh, all right, very is this low traffic. Hold on, I just have a specific question to you. Yeah. This is not uh, here to make comments. This will be over. solutions in place. There, um, we're talking about putting some brakes in it, but that's not really, um, that doesn't really pertain to this project at all. Um, but we, are, we do think we can figure those issues we're out. Working with, we're, we're working with our disability department, and we've been uh, working closely with them on that. Two part question. First of all, because there's contour for the lanes, basically, they, they do them in other parts of the country. Um, and, you know, we're two, two ways. There's less space, basically. You know what I'm talking about, the proper flow. Is there a kind of bridge? The bridge where it's northbound. Yeah, but they're right, they're going right, they're right next to each other. You're talking about two way facilities on the side of the street? Is that what I'm talking about uh, one by the lane that's like, uh, one by the lane we're going both directions. So the, the, the nature of North Figueroa has been that, you know, we, we don't want to remove more automobile space than we need to. We only really need the one lane to get the little bit of extra space that we need. But taking the one lane to give us the little bit of extra space we need also gives us that extra buffer as well. Um, so the contraflow lanes are something we haven't really done much in the city. We would consider them if they were a great solution, but we don't. I, I don't see the applicability here. When they use less space, they, yeah. they don't use less space. They, you still need the minimum space for a bike lane is five foot. You need that five foot in whatever direction you go. Um, to get the five foot for North Figueroa, ten foot, need, essentially the five ten foot, direction. five on each side, even a, a contra flow, even contra flow, you need five in one direction, five in the other. You can't just have five that's two way, and then you have bicycles kind of hitting each other. Or not, or is that there be less, one less buffer. But then the space that we need for North Fig requires that we take something away. It's got to be parking, or it's got to be a travel lane. Um, we just for this um, proposal, we have removed the one travel lane. You can't, you can't take away half the travel lane and have it still be useful to automobiles. So we've taken the minimum amount that we need. That minimum amount still gives us the room to have the buffer. In some other cases, that may be applicable. Another question is, what if, if, what if you do it in a total? We've got the whole lot of... What if I a two-part question? What if, okay, what if um, you put it in and it's a complete disaster and it's absolutely brittle off? Now what's the, uh, what's the so any bike lane in the city can come out the same way that it went in via a public hearing. So um, that's always an option for any facility in the city. Are these two guys on the Real quick, there's already established bike routes that parallel these streets you're talking about. Why do we have to put the lanes on the boulevards when you have neighborhoods that can handle it just to be safety? Which is We've gotten this question at probably every meeting. No, um, we have kind of two networks in the city. We have the neighborhood network, which is these types of facilities. So that those are really good facilities to help you get from your residence to the major commercial corridor. But if you're going to bike to a destination on the North Figueroa, North Figueroa is the street that you need to bike on. Um, and so our, our backbone arterial network is on a five-mile grid um, kind of prioritizes those, those types of facilities. There's no other way to get to a destination, to bike to the destination on Figueroa, except to be on Figueroa. That's why it's, that's why we're talking about it. The neighborhood networks are, the neighborhood alternative routes are always an option. Um, but they do not serve, they cannot serve the same purpose and utility that, a, that the bike lane on the major commercial portal would. Yes. Yeah, I guess I have a, a kind of a two-part question. All these proposals that have been done that would be being pretty much force fed from the mayor and city council. Um, 
Is it a done deal? And if it's a done deal, Ultimately, a decision can be made, so it's not a done deal. Nothing is a done deal. 